Hi, this video is to show you a very high level overview of the payroll process in Scissortail. I've logged into Scissortail as Kathy Watts, the Director of Payroll and HR at our demo company. And in Kathy's uh, start bar here, she's got a shortcut for payroll. If she hovers over the icon, then she has a list of frequently used items that pops up. So let's click this link for process payroll. Here's our open payrolls report. You can see that we're looking at the open payrolls by pay date report. If we wanna look at a different filter that we've saved, we just click on the down arrow. Now you also wanna look at this payroll status column. This column is often filtered to not equals to uh, finalized. So then exclamation point equal sign means not equals to and then finalized so we're we've got everything filtered down to just the open items we can also see the date range that we're looking at by looking over here in the light blue oval that says pay date last month to next month end so we know if we want to extend that uh, area we can just click on this blue icon and we can change this range we can also change how we choose the range. Let's drill down into one of the payrolls. The way you process payroll is you click on this first icon called the payroll prep process. When this opens up, you have a jump, jump to menu on the left, as well as your checklist down the center of the screen. The first thing that we do is we click on the blue words, go to time prep. This opens a new checklist for us. So the first thing that we do is we just go through each step as needed. We view the pending time off requests, but we have a note that says there are none. So we don't have to do that. We're gonna check it as complete. We'll view the timesheet change requests, but our note also says that there are none. So I'm gonna check that as complete. Moving on down to the timesheet status, it says that I have 25 timesheets ready for payroll. Let's click the blue words view timesheet status to review them. When I open this up, I have one timesheet that's been submitted but not approved. I can review that timesheet by clicking on the icon at the beginning of the screen, ensuring that the employee has filled out every day or has had a punch every day, I can even click the summary by day to look and see if I'm missing any days. When I'm satisfied with the timesheet, I'll click approve. Then I'll use the back arrow inside scissor tail and make my way back to the checklist. Now that our timesheets have been approved, we're gonna go down here to the reapply pay calculations. I'm just gonna click that button and apply the pay calculations to all of the timesheets. Pay calculations are the rules that sit behind the timesheet and determine how time is counted. How, when do they get overtime, how different rules are applied and things of that nature. Once that's complete, we need to process the records. So I'm gonna click the process records button, tell it to run, and processing the records then takes those rules and those uh, codes from the timesheets and prepares them to create a pay statement. So it converts them into earnings codes. We can view the pay prep records here, although I see something that says that I have no errors so I can go on to my final results. Something I missed a little bit ago was completing my check marks over here on the right. You can see that it allows me to move forward without checking those check marks. And even if I do say it's completed, I can still go back to one of the areas and open it up by clicking on the blue words. I'm gonna complete my processed records I can view my prep records. I don't have anything, any errors to review, so I'm fine there. And 
In some cases, we would create a payroll interface file. This is for companies whose payroll is processed in something other than Scissortail. We're going to process our payroll in Scissortail today, so I'm going to skip that spot. I'm going to mark it as complete, and I'm going to lock my pay period so nobody can make changes to any of the timesheets. Marking that complete, now I can go back to the View Payroll Prep. This takes me back to the original checklist that I was on, and now that I've completed the time prep, I'm going to check that box as complete. Now we're going to move through the payroll processing or the payroll prep process. Of course, you've got reminders out here to hire any new employees or edit employees. These are your uh, manual adjustments that you would need to make prior to payroll to any employees that would be permanent adjustments for that employee. Once those are complete, you would just click the mark as complete checkbox. Now editing employees is very simple because all we have to do is we're going to click the blue words, we get a list of employees, we can open that employee, and we can make any changes we need to. Let's say that Mitch got a rate change. I'll just come over here, look for base compensation. It's going to take me straight to the base compensation widget. I can see that he's currently at $15.50 an hour, and I can add a row. I can say annual increase and make it $16.50 an hour. Save it and it's now updated. I can see that it's calculated his new annual rate. And when I save that page, click the back arrow next to employee profile and click the back arrow again and it takes me back to my pay prep process. My adjustments are complete. I don't need to import any time, so I'm going to check that off. And next I'm going to sync time. Syncing time brings, uh, creates timesheets out of the time cards, or creates pay statements, I should say, out of the time cards that were uh, processed in our previous timesheet uh, review. So when I click the, the row for the row that I want to sync, then I clicked the sync time, and when it's done syncing, it gives me a message of success. I'm going to click the back arrow, and I'm going to mark the sync complete. Again, I can sync as many times as I need to. If I have to go back to the time prep and make a time card adjustment, I can do that and come back and sync the time again. Next, we want to recalculate the pay statements. I can see they've been recalculated. And to view the pay statements, I click the blue words that say to view pay statements. Here I've got a list of pay statements and I can click the pencil on any pay statement to review it and make sure that it's being processed with the correct rate or look for any changes that need to be made. If I need to make an adjustment or add something special to this particular pay statement, I can do that here. I can even add rows. I can go to utilities to make adjustments to taxes one-time adjustments to taxes. I can go to options and make a one-time adjustment to block any of our uh, deductions or something of that nature. I can even block direct deposits if he had some. Every time I click save on a pay statement, it recalculates that pay statement. So there's no need to recalculate all of the statements at once. If I need to add a pay statement, I would click the new pay statement. I'm going to choose my employee, select the payments type. So if we already have a regular pay statement out here, then I would choose to do a bonus or a regular second check for my pay statement type, 
which would actually be a pay statement that does not include any of the regular deductions. That way you can have insurance come out on one check and the other check would simply be the earnings. Clicking the back arrow, we're going to go back to the pay prep process. I'm happy with my pay statements. And next you're going to view your payroll totals. This is great because it's very similar to a summary page that we see on a lot of payroll registers. The neat thing is we're looking at it electronically. So if we want to know what information makes up one of these rows, all we have to do is click on the icon at the beginning of that row and we can see each employee that had an amount that contributed to that subtotal. So you can see I've got all of these employees, I've got the total amounts, which gives me the amount on the uh, record. If I see one of these amounts is not matching up to what I expect, I can drill down on the employee, I can check their payroll data, either on their base comp or maybe it's a scheduled deduction. If the deduction is related to a benefit, then I can go to the HR tab and go to the benefit plans and make sure that my benefit plans are set up correctly. Once I've checked everything I need on the employee, made any corrections or adjustments on the employee, I would come back using my back arrow, go all the way back, come back up to the pay statement for that employee. I would review the pay statement once more. I can preview it from this screen to make sure everything looks correct. Save it again, let it recalculate, make sure everything's on there. If I need to preview it once more after I've saved it to see if any changes have been made, that's a good place to do it. And then click my back arrow, go back to the pay prep screen, check my totals again, make sure everything looks good, click the back arrow, and close the payroll. So closing the payroll is just our first step towards finalizing the payroll. This locks the pay statements so no one else as an admin can get into those pay statements and make any changes until I'm done checking all of my totals. Now I've got a list of uh, reports that are available to me for review. Um, some of the favorites are going to be the payroll recap and funding report. This will actually compare last payroll to this payroll, show you what your funding uh, and where all the funds are going to. I'm gonna click the back arrow, go back down here to my review. Another one we like is the payroll register by pay statement. PST stands for pay statement. This gives you a listing of all of the employee information at a glance. So it looks like a pay stub at a glance. Another one that we like to look at is the master data change report. What changes have happened on each employee record since the last time we ran payroll? Okay, when we're done reviewing, I'm going to bring these up to date down here. We've reviewed, and now we're ready to finalize. Once we've finalized and everything is ready to go, the next thing to do is going to be to deliver our payroll. Several of the reports listed above, as well as GL reports and other items depending on your process, are going to be automatically delivered 
to the person that should receive them when you click the Deliver Payroll button. So I'm going to click Deliver Payroll and I will receive uh, a check register as well as some other items as soon as that's complete. All right, that's all there is to payroll.